Okay, so we're in on a 10 minute game. Just having a look at position. Okay, we just go with our tried and tested. Just avoiding the knight coming here, attacking this point. I'm sure there must be some sort of attack or combination or tactical thing blocking me from doing that, but I've come to the using, using this just to avoid this situation altogether because I don't really like the other continuation which is the pawn pushing here and the knight coming here because that just opens up a can of worms if the opponent plays it correctly. So this is a pretty steady opening. Watching for any potential tactics or anything like that. But really just trying to just find good position as usual and just getting ready to castle if we can. Fingers crossed we can. And then we can start playing a bit of chess. So they're coming in for it anyway, so it looks like they're just going to go for the knight and a bishop for a rook situation, or maybe not. So they've sta stabilised the knight, and it's not, it's one of those where it, it shocks you in a sense, because you go, well, that means the knight's staying there forever, because if we did end up taking the knight, it opens up the rook, then there's this weak pawn here, that the queen's going to look to try and get into this space at some point and then just challenge on this side so we have to be mindful that that is what they're attempting to do also when they bring the bishop in these sort of positions here and they're supporting with the pawn that's what they're attempting to do basically focusing on the weak pawn in front of the king let's see if the bishop wants to dance doesn't have many options wherever it goes it'll be taken but it depends on where it goes what that will determine what we do from that point on so just bear in mind we're not interested in taking the knight because of that's all they're focused on so if their brain is just focused on that we can get on with actually playing our chess game because they're just looking for the quick and dirty tactic around this area here which is the answer process in a sense but the setup of this, as you can see, the queen's coming through now for the quick and dirty type pressure towards the king. Um, there's a difference between quick and dirty and then actually using that answer more appropriately. So we'll take this bishop off the board just in the first instance. So they're moving quick now because they're chomping at the bit to get some sort of pressure on the king now. They're, they're, they're angry, they want to get it, you know, nothing's going to stop them from getting it. So we, we can make our moves nice and steadily. And I'm just thinking of just opening up the bishop a bit, you know, white square bishop. I was thinking of coming here, but he's got two pawns there, so I'll just bring it here. Opens up the bishop, potential attack here, but he's wanting his queen to come here anyway. How fast they're moving. Moving fast like the game is over, but he's brought the knight out now, so he's not really gone for that as yet. Okay, we can just bring the bishop here for now. He's going to squeeze here. Gives us something to do. We don't have to rush this. We've got like seven minutes. They're on eight minutes, so there's no big shakes in those terms. It's really about finding the better position as far as we can and it's gone the other way interesting times interesting times okay so square square knight knight bishop always end up trapping the magic bishop there's no point in actually really attacking the knight because I'm not going to take the knight anyway am I but it gives them something to think about but they ain't going to move the knight anyway Let's just block off here and open up the um, queen. And it's moving dead quick as usual. Okay. 
So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, but it's not, it's blocked his queen now from that passageway at least. Let's attack the pawn, it's got no protection, but it's easily protected, but it gives us something to do. Hopefully it tempts his knight to actually take and then we get rid of the knight voluntarily. But they're taking too long thinking about it. Okay, so he's just defended, so he's just keeping that knight there forever and a day. Right, so we can move it. Can attack still. I don't see any point to that. Don't want to waste my time attacking something that really doesn't. It's not going to really affect it. Might be the only thing that I've got though. Hmm. Yeah, let's attack it. Let's attack it. Because they're not fully. Ooh. Definitely wants that. But it's not fully developed now. You know, pieces. The white square bishop's gone. There's not a major attack on here. So I think we can take now. Let's bring this here. We've got a two on one here. So the whole shape changed when we got rid of the white square bishop which was trapped in its own right anyway and then the queen ended up on a dark square so it wasn't able to sort of challenge these, this pawn here. So that was working quite nicely for us. He's still attempting to come and squish us. Simple capture should do. We've got like three pieces on there. Got the queen. I think that should work, shouldn't it? Just capture here. Queen captures back. He's going to have a bit of um, hurt coming on him. So it's opened up nice space for us now just to catch. Queen's gone into the corner. He's still chomping at the bit for this week's this square here really chomping at the bit like i said that's all they're going to be focused on and um, that type of style of player all they do is go for that quick and dirty type focus nothing wrong with it if you if you play it right it's just that it messes up the whole of your other pieces because they're not kind of working together so he's brought the knight round but he's leaving his king his king is home alone it's not castled so could we take advantage of that? We could come here, but it's easily defended. But then we can swing across to the other side. And plus his, um, the bishop is blocking that any castling rights on that side. Just put a check on. And we've got like a horizontal situation going on here. And maybe not to that one. Yeah, so the bishop was always going to be coming down and defending. But we do have the horizontal thing as we've got the arrows on. Let's just bring this here. So we're trying to keep make sure that our king isn't home alone. But at the same time, really putting some pressure towards their king. Because the king can't castle now. And if we can get the rooks involved attacking this pawn here that doesn't have any protection on. So it's working together quite nicely. But the, what I was sort of saying is, and what we are actually seeing, is that quick and dirty sort of look at focus on this simple weak pawn really doesn't help the game. I think a slow development towards that area helps because then you've got your pieces working together, your king's safe, and then you can basically mobilize a lot across the board and your pieces are more protected rather than going for the quick and dirty type tactic thing and there's nothing wrong with tactics but tactics should be utilized in the right at the right moment and i think using tactics in <clears throat> too early in the game 
does leave you kind of exposed because you've not genuinely worked your pieces together unless of course the opponents made an egregious mistake whereby they cannot get out of the tactic and they're getting checkmated in the next two or three moves because everything is forced so those tactical type maneuvers work quite fine and they can utilize the answer process within there but you have to be mindful of that does your tactic actually go <clears throat> towards finishing the person off or does it dry out and then you've left all your pieces hanging um, you've got a bad position on the board uh, so it's these things you've got to think about when you're doing tactics but there's nothing wrong with them it's just doing them at the right moment I'm not a tactics man I'm a positional guy but Right, where we've got, got our arrows all over the place here. Okay, so he's coming down, he's attacking our pawn here. It's got like a two on one in that sense with this pawn here. If we bring the rook here, his rook's just going to take. This pawn doesn't have any protection on it, like we mentioned. Can we hit that? Can we hit it with the queen here? Then he takes, we take. It's a whole tactical setup, this, isn't it? Hmm. We're plus three at the minute because we've got like an extra minor piece. Let's take these off. Interesting time. Oh, team, two minutes we're on. <gasps> I was treating it like it's a long game, long play game. This is all tactical because he takes, takes there. If we take back. Or even if we take with the king, then he takes all this stuff here, so there's no point going up there. Oh man, I'm in blitzy mode. Damn. That's when you get into the game, you see, I'm just looking and I'm analysing while I'm trying to... Oh, he's looking to get my bishop off the board. Let's defend because... As tactical and dirty tactic as it is, it still is quite effective. It's just a matter of us being able to defend against that effectiveness. We're always saying trying to cover off the blind spots as best possible. I mean, we do have this eventually if if, if it all works out, but not yet. Because we've covered, covered a recent blind spot um, exercise. Uh, prevention is better than cure. Whoa! Okay, 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 right, okay, so he's reduced the amount of people that can attack this area for now, which is good for us. I need to move a bit quicker. I'm on 225, so I suppose that's not bad. They're on four minutes, though, so they've been whipping out the moves. We do have an X-ray here onto the rook if he keeps his knight there, potentially. He still has this attack on this pawn, so he, I think he's probably going to take advantage of that now, this second with the rook does that help him though ooh close but no cigar always oh, trying to bring it across in there put like three three pieces on there but the bishop is protecting this area anyway so I don't think we need to lose too much sleep I don't know why he's not taking the pawn he's so focused on this line so really, well, thing is, I mean, once that knight disappears, we can put a check on his king. So if we get this knight off the board, put a check on the king, then he's bouncing around because we've got the rooks that can face off the king. If that's allowed to happen, but maybe he's going to move his knight now, jam his pieces in. He's gone for the rook situation, but I don't know if that's going to make much difference on that score because we've got like support from the bishop. Can bring the queen through and put a check on the king i have to move a bit swiftly because i'm on two minutes at the moment so it's going here or it's going here it's probably safer going on the oh well it's 
I don't think it would have made any difference, would it? Okay, so we'll go here. And then the bishop can just go in and put a check on. I don't think there's anything else that can stop that, really. Maybe the rook can defend. What am I doing? I'm overthinking the thing. <laughs> I think I've done three games like that where all I had to do was move the queen and the king can't move. I was there trying to style it out, bring the bishop here and all that rubbish. I don't even need to do that. Okay, yes, yeah, so let's have a look at the analysis on that one. Because I think it's quite key. It's one one thing that I'm actually I'm observing at the moment in um, some of my games is the element of the tactics type situation. And there, like I said, there's um, before I've said, well, I'm not. Inter I'm definitely not interested in tactics, and still now I'm not interested in tactics training. But having an understanding of what tactics are really does help your game because then you kind of know how to circumvent them and you know how to practice with them as well you know how to you know work with people and um, to help them understand and gain more improvements in their performance so you can help enhance their games by you know not making particular moves just to to allow them to get the performance off of the tactic so it's um it's quite key to for me to understand that type of thing it's just that tactics on their own and not necessarily the game of chess a tactic comes about when you have an appropriate position in order to be able to deliver those pieces in conjunction with each other to give give you an advantage and nine times out of ten when I see the tactics being utilized in the games that I watch um, that tactic burns out it does like an instant hit doo -doo 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 -doo, and then it it doesn't have any fo any follow-up or any follow-through the odd occasion yet yeah, that odd one will have a follow-through and you know it'll basically get the opponent to capitulate or they've ga gathered so much material or they've actually put the person in check checkmate um, because of that but it's very rare that that occurs especially if you're playing somebody who is of the same level of you same experience as you um, and they're not going to allow you to get the full effect of that tactic off but yet players will still continue with the tactic because they believe some somehow somewhere it magically is going to create the advantage that they've seen in a book or that they've seen in a practice session and to me hanging back a little bit with the tactics and utilizing maybe part of the tactic and then getting a good position based off of that tactic is the better way to work with any sort of tactical type thinking so case in point in this game here so it's probably going to show they're out and out winning but we're just going to have a look and see so we develop the knights so now they're starting their tacti tactical arrangement already really i mean the target in here target in here but from the moment they've done this pawn move here obviously this dictates that they're not actually going for the knight and the bishop for a rook exchange they're actually looking to get this pawn with potential for the queen coming here or getting sighted across here or on one of these lines here to start putting pressure towards this pawn so that'll be their main focal points based on my experience that's all um, it's not the word of the law it's just the way that I've seen games going so we attack the bishop but that's not what with the story we're trying to tell here and so the pawn takes and then we open up our bishop because we know that there's potentially some sort of activity ready to go on for the queen or whatever to start targeting this area especially onto our king which is the answer process but the answer process has a little bit more oomph to it so we attack the queen okay just to make sure that it gets off the line so now the queen is on a dark square so I'm feeling fairly comfortable that it can't challenge it from 
you know this angle here it can still jump here but for now our bishop is covering this square so now he's trying to get rid of our bishop but he's actually blocked his own queen in from getting to this square so we bring the bishop back now maybe really tantalizing the knight to come here so to get rid of this knight you know and he doesn't move the knight so we attack the knight again uh, gauge bar's really singing for us on this actually okay so they're seeing something that we're seeing which to me on my side um it's more about being aware of the attempt that they're trying to make towards our king area there's no attempt at castling at the moment their king is a little bit airy how do we get to that looking at the establishment of their pieces are they really doing any major damage they've seem to have taken away the threat now for attacking our king area so now we can take the knight off the board as we mentioned during the game the pattern was slightly different now so we brought the knight back now so we're now defending this area so he's dropped his pawn potentially looking again to keep that pressure focused on this on the, the king's area the weak pawn area but as you can see these other pieces aren't kind of working together at the minute and we do have like a pretty half decent stronghold on this position which is starting to lead towards his own king area so he's almost creating a passageway for us to attack his king area so we take the pawn uh, looking at the rhythm of the captures because at the end of the day if his queen does take then now we can take here with the bishop and basically pressure the queen with a lesser piece and they do actually capture so we capture with the bishop so now look at the space that's created around his king area the opponents created this because they've given us their pawns open up the space all because they were focused on attacking this area but it ain't over yet their attack their attack still continues still focusing on this area without actually king safety without the other pieces working together so this this is what i'm trying to sort of um relate to myself is that keep on looking at what the opponent is attempting to do if there is a tactic that is available then try and block that tactic off as best possible because usually a tactic is just a one move two move thing but sometimes they can be quite strong so i'm not putting down all tactics it's just it takes the soul out of playing proper chess whereas positional chess if you don't understand tactics you're going to get caught if you're a positional man and you don't understand tactics you're definitely going to get caught out uh, so I'm not saying positional chess is the best thing since sliced spread because you have to understand what can happen to you um, with your pieces so that you can then mo mobilize them to block off any tactical type arrangements so in essence with this player this player um, definitely understood what they were trying to do but potentially if they'd have slowed down their development of this attack towards this area i think they would have been in a better state i don't think they would have lost as many pawns and open up space around their king i think their king would have been safe safely tucked away in the castle if they'd taken the time they rushed to try and do a quick and dirty thing which was to get the checkmate as quickly as possible this is why they're in this current state at the minute so that's the massive difference between the answer process when done correctly and quick and dirty tactics we want to make sure that our king is safe our pieces are working together keeping the king nice and feel like it's got it it's got company it's not home alone and then being able to then formulate an attack towards their king or weak spaces or weak pieces so that's the general idea there's a massive difference there I've, and we just reeled them off quite a few of them already there so now we can bring the bishop back blocking off the potential attack towards this area because we've only got the knight there and the only pieces that is protecting it is the king so now they bring their knight into the game trying to get it involved in the game somehow to cause maybe a distraction so that they can get this bishop off maybe so that they can go for this attack here okay they can't castle because the bishop is blocking the castling rights at the moment 
So in order for us to get back into the game, because uh, we can't see the gauge bar, we don't know we're winning. Um, all we know is we're, we're up a minor piece, but positionally, he's corridoring his attack towards our King Gary. So we need to get more pieces involved in our own corridor. So our corridor defense to then basically be able to exact some form of attack. So I want to make sure my king is feeling really safe and, and comfy. So the bishop defends. So we can bring the queen across as we highlighted early doors in the game. So now it's a nice steady attack process, nice steady, but it's also a good defense mechanism for any potential attacking situations that may occur. Rooks are ready to get rocking and rolling. Nice open, nice half spaces here at the minute. This pawn's got no protection on it, so we're like umring and ahhing. How do we get to that? So they bring their rook across. Nice attacking this pawn here. It's got no protection on. So what we do is we go right. Well, okay, we're going to attack his piece then. So we do a bit of a more for your William Steinitz type thing. Yeah, if you're attacking a piece of ours, we'll attack a piece of yours. But at the same token, we're keeping defence on this pawn here because of the tactical nature of what would go on okay so if we had gone up to here say yeah then there is the element of them capturing here and if we decided to capture here then they've got the if we captured with the king then they've got so those small, tiny, tactical type manoeuvres, quick and dirty tactics, you have to watch for them and really understand what's happening in the game. This opponent kept this pressure on, well, it was pressure for on themselves because their position was not ideal. There's a massive difference. Keeping pressure on and being in a good position, position, then that's a positive for you. But keeping pressure on when you're not in a good position really is um, detrimental to your own game. So we bring the queen down, blocking off all of this um, aspects, but at the same token still being able to look like we're putting attack on this pawn here. So the bishop actually moves. Not sure whether they should have moved or not, but I'm glad they did. So now we brought the knight through, which is blocking off their attack, because obviously we don't want them taking, because they've got like a double attack going on here. So they capture, so I think they maybe got a little bit fed up with the current position, which usually does happen when things aren't working out quite rightly for the quick and dirty tactics type player. Um, so they'll just keep on trying to be forceful, trying to smash open the door, but all the while the, sh the sure footing that they've got underneath their feet is just crumbling away because they've not actually built their house properly. So we bring the bishop through, attacking the knight, and as we did explain, if, if the knight did disappear we'd be able to do some activity, but at the same token we do have the queen putting a check on the king. And then they move and then and this was where i was getting carried away with myself thinking yes i go here but then his rook would just take and then the queen would come back and put a check on and it's a bit of dancing around with the king and stuff like that that's not really what we want but i suppose it would have been a checkmate either way wouldn't it just having a look at the tail of the tape so if we went here went there check there where what can come in his way so there but then he goes back into the corner and then, then we get to that position and checkmate so it's a long-winded way of going for the checkmate but i've got to remember about just doing that simple queen move dear me that simple move there you know it's there the king can't move so all in all um understanding tactics to be able to defend against tactics not to be a tactical uh, master and once you understand that always always look at what is the continuation next for their tactical maneuver and usually there's like it i would go i would say it's probably a maximum of four moves that you probably need to look at um the tactical expert really doesn't go further than four moves you know they're like a one two three type player so if you can let sort of like manage um i'm probably going to get shot down for that as well saying that you know i've upset the two thousands already um I'll probably get upset for calling tacticians they can only, can only think three moves ahead but 
in my world in the way that i've understood it when i see the tactics being pulled out it is like one two three moves and then after that it kind of dries out so if you can have a look at the four move calculation um which we've said right from the very beginning maximum four moves have a look at what the danger zones are block them off as best you can uh, if you can't block them off find a good counter attacking position and then from there just um, keep on watching what the opponent's trying to do with their quick and dirty tactics